right. All right. Oh, uh, I, I, I forgot to take care of something before we started recording. You guys mind if I take care of that now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. We're waiting. I think I'm good now. What do you think of this new jacket? I didn't realize there was a sale at the gay store. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the motherfucking Good Enough Podcast. We're going to get all the promo stuff out of the way right now. If you want an extra bonus episode and early content, go to the fucking Patreon. That is only $5 a month. That said it, $5 a fucking month. And you can get our early episodes that are main, that go public. You get it early, and you get a... Freaking premium episode as well! You get a free premium episode and you make five dollars a month! There's also more. There's also more. I have stuff to announce as well. My new song is out now. October 13th. You can listen to it right now on all everything. On Bandcamp. October it's 13th. Streaming. It's the song's called the October song's 13th. Called October 13th. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, and it drops Dummy. It dropped last Friday with a fucking music video. That's right. I posted a fucking video. Isn't that fucking crazy? Isn't that crazy? All right, Jake, what, Jackson, what do you guys got to promote? Uh, you'll find me in the, like, around, you know, in all the right. streets. Uh, all the things you broke came out, like, a month and a half ago. So go listen to that, too, while you're at it. Go listen to my new song. It's called... Um, Sad and horny by Jackson I don't, I don't Hurts. Have, I, don't a, I don't have a song. I don't have a song to promote. That that should be that could be the title. Sad and horny, and then you just like I don't know what you talk about, but you can make it work. Yo, I'm so fucking sad, and I got a boner. <laughs> That's that was a horrible bit. Anyways, welcome back to the podcast, guys. <laughs> What's up, guys, welcome back. Um, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, the microphone shirt. I mean, why are you wearing it, Jackson? I mean, yeah, I get oh it. God, That's it's funny. so funny you said that. That's funny. Because he did the thing with the elephant. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. The real elephant in the room is that Jake is in a fishbowl at the moment. It's okay. He's going to sound great over the podcast, but if you're watching on you YouTube, address, this is, address this is very different. Everything went wrong. I, not a single thing was working. I was ready to put a fucking hole in my drywall. I'm not even kidding. But we're here. He was legitimately Somehow. pissed off. Everything but it, but it's failing. funny. But it's funny because when Jake gets like pissed, he doesn't like yell or like scream. He's just like, "I'm pissed off. I'm seething. I get seething. I'm still pretty seething right now. We gotta do a lot to get my dander up for the show, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll get there. We'll get Jackson, there. Jackson, was that by any chance ranch on your pizza? Yeah, my man. My man. My man. The classic combo. My I man. can't. St- People are like, anyone gets all ranch on pizza. Anyone? Shut up. Anyone who. Shut up. This is ranch on pizza. You're wrong. I suggest you try it again. Maybe your ranch is bad. Maybe you got bad ranch. It's not Hidden Valley. That's the good shit. Hot take. All right. L- quick question. Should I? Do I dare try unplugging this mic and using a handheld? Because I think this is a bit of a weird situation. I, I don't think, think it'll stop the recording. <laughs> I think you're does, overthinking it. I think it looks great. If it great. does. But I'll you can. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's switching it. We're still Either recording. Battery is we're recording. We're recording. We're we're still going. Yeah, we're going. We're, we're steamrolling through this. <laughs> also, they can hear me. Uh, podcast viewers, they can hear me because I have to be connected to my phone. But we're gonna see if this breaks everything. If it does, I'm just gonna go cry. You just want to make this difficult for me to edit. You just want to <laughs> give me a bad time. I think time. it should be okay. I think. All right. If Jake, if Jake, think of a topic. Did it? Did it end the recording? Oh my god. Holy fucking shit. The Hello? suspense is killing no me. No shot that worked. Let's go, it worked? dude. Oh! Yeah, no let's shot. Go. Dude, that's let's actually go. pretty epic. 
That's when, pretty, that's kind of heat. This feel all right. This feels much better. This that feels, feels like, better. That is you were right. This that, feels that like a vacation, a vacation setup for me right this now. This feels like this feels like yeah. You're in a vacation setup, and you also are holding the handheld mic, so I'm expecting you to say something like misogynist or something like laying back on a couch. No, you listen, know how guys. those po- you guys know how those podcasts are. It's always like dudes slouched over, like not saying it, and they're like, isn't it crazy how like. Fucking women. They say they don't want to be in the kitchen, but they put milk and eggs in their body. (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. Before we we get to any, like, actually cool things that we've done recently, i.e. Jackson, we'll get to that later. I have a quip to talk to you guys about. That can be the thumbnail. (laughs) I have a quip. I have have something to talk to you guys about because I've seen multiple photos or multiple instances of this happening on social media. Of men's penises? What the fuck are people buying at grocery stores? Because I keep seeing these things where people are like, I Um, just. I'm pretty sure it's groceries. Well, listen, people will go to a grocery store and they'll be like, I just spent. $85 $85 uh, uh, for, for only a few days worth worth of food. This is Joe Biden's America. And then they'll post a photo of what they bought. And it'll be like 60 eggs and like prepackaged salads and fucking like one rotisserie chicken. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like my average meal. I mean. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But like, do people not know like... You got to make this shit yourself if you if you want it to be cheap. You can't just buy all the pre-made stuff all, at all Luke, times. Luke, you're just hitting the perfect storm of me being pissed off. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Would you believe it? I went to the grocery store recently, right? Uh, Sam's Club, Costco for you West Coasters. And they I... Are, they're completely different. But that's close okay. enough. It's the same it's, idea, it's though. The whole, it's, it's the, the whole, same whole idea. Same thing. idea. But I walked away... With a price tag that was so outrageous, I almost jumped in oncoming traffic. I'm not even kidding. You, all right. So I got a good. Uh, all right, this is to be fair. It's a good amount of stuff. It wasn't like I'm just like I got. All right, Joe well, Biden's here's America the thing. How special. how long will it last you? Like how long will the food last you? A good. Uh, I'd say a good amount. I'd say probably like two weeks. I'd say all it's right. two weeks okay. worth. Yeah, I walked away three hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> Jake, what the fuck? Bro, what you cost? are shopping wrong. Yeah, what, what is going on? What happened? Three hundred and thirty dollars for two weeks of food is like thirty dollars. What did you buy? Wa- now, Wagyu steaks that, and let fucking me get to the, to the <laughs> sushi to the center. A5. You're joking, but I did get tuna steak, which is what I'm making today. That's where that's where that comes from. However, comma, I need to fucking scream about whoever the fuck was like. You know what? Instant coffee pods are a good idea. Who the fuck gets off to pricing those the way they are? What? How what much is, are those? What is it? Let's what play it? a game. The, Wait, let's play the a coffee game. pods. Coffee, coffee pods, pods, like for oh oh, espresso. you mean like oh, you mean like? Are you talking about like for like a Keurig or something like that? Yes, a Keurig. Okay, yeah, 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 an espresso yeah. Keurig, something like that. Oh, let's play. Well. Let's play uh, teenagers. Well, late to early twenties, mid teenagers discuss the price of coffee pods <laughs> we're at costco already <laughs> we're at costco or sam's club whatever you want to call it how much do you think one pack of the donut shop or whatever the fuck ca- uh, coffee pods cost? it's funny a hundred my... how many how many pods are in the a 100 pa- a 100 a, 100 a 100 pack oh keep you're in getting mind, it for the is, long haul dude keep in mind this is sam's club though Keep in mind. So, so it's, it's like it's a hundred pods, and each pod is one cup of coffee. I believe so. Yeah. So that's like a quarter of a year. That's gonna well, last. I mean, you, a third of a year. Drink, if you drink one cup of coffee a, a day, w- let's assume this person drinks two cups of coffee. Let's just say to keep okay, to round okay. things. Okay. So up. this is fifty days of coffee you're buying. Fifty days of coffee. That's How much still, do you? I think? mean, that's still. I mean, I would hope. I would hope you're getting at Sam's Club, so it would be like. Highly discounted because you're getting sixty five dollars. I I would hope I would hope to say thirty at at like minimum. I know it's not going to be that, but how much was it? All right, Jackson. That's not fair. He highballed it, but he got kind of close. It was fifty dollars. That's that's. I feel like that's fair. I mean, fifty dollars for fifty days of coffee. 
It's Sam's Club. <clears throat> Homeless people can yeah, walk in there. That's 100 the cups of coffee, though. You go to a Starbucks, it's like $5 for just one coffee. Okay, if you're doing the math. Well, okay. I got two. Two boxes. I don't even drink yeah, okay, the coffee. Yeah. I don't drink it. It's for why, someone else. Why'd you get? Then why'd you get for it if you're not gonna drink mother. it? Your mother. Your mother. I live in a house with other people. Then why'd you have to buy shit. it? Why are you? Mad? Because I'm a goddamn you... adult. <laughs> but why did you buy it? It's you're not drinking it. It's your mom. Because. But your your I mom. Will, how many cups of coffee does your mom drink a day? Probably two. What? Two dose. Use that means two. two. So she Bisexual. has coffee for 100 days now. That's a pretty good deal, I feel like. Yeah, and I have no money for 100 days, Jackson. Now look at us. In the same spot. <laughs> nowhere. We went nowhere. <laughs> you may have coffee, but what don't you have? The financial stability that you once had. Freedom. Freedom in Joe Biden's America. God. I'm there so no fucking angry. That I'm going to become America. a I'm gonna This become is fucking... true. I think this is what we all can agree on. It's that we are... Truly in Joe Biden's America right now. We really are fucking, in Joe Biden's America. I'm in my America, studio really. right now. My studio is called The Downstairs. <laughs> in the stew, bro. Um, I like that you have Sunkiss right next to you. It's pretty cool. Oh, you? Oh yeah. I forgot I'm in like super wide so you can like see that shit. <laughs> How far can you see? Holy fuck. This is wide. <laughs> pretty far. <laughs> pretty wide. You can see the mic. This is so there? funny. <laughs> the fish fry is crazy. All right. It was a, that was a good call though. Crazy. All right, the reason I just paid my speeding ticket too. That's why I have no money. The reason money. I, right, the reason I bring the groceries up is because I was at the grocery today, and I, I spent. Pee. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a lot. Can yes, I pee? you can pee. You can pee. Thank you. Jake's gonna go they pee. Everyone, podcast listeners, you can't hear it, but they will be able to hear it because my mic will still be set up, and I'm gonna be if, making very funny noises. Yeah, if Jake. If, oh great. Yeah, if Jake says anything in response to what I say, I'll, I'll make sure to let everyone know. Um, but, oh my god, he just said the N word. <laughs> Wow, that was really <laughs> lies. I'm still here. I'm wow, still here, lies. Oh my God, he just said it again. <laughs> Jeez, you guys do not. He is going on a tirade. Yeah, he is. It's, going. It is the musical chairs of slurs is, in my ears right is, now as he is going to the bathroom. This is insane. <laughs> I'm not using shit. I'm not using shit. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but I went to the grocery today. I'm gonna fully disclose. Uh. I spent. <laughs> <laughs> Jake just uh, moaned uh, into the fire. I'm leaving this in. I'm leaving. I'm leaving that audio in. <laughs> okay. So, oh my god. So I go. <laughs> and now it's the same more slurs. <laughs> oh my god. You're gonna. This is gonna sound like a joke, everyone. But Jake actually, in real life, just said, "I'm gonna say more slurs now." I'm leaving the local audio in for this part. They'll hear it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you piss like a racehorse. It is a river. A river in my that's ears right, right now. That's, that's where that expression comes from. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I spent a hundred and thirty dollars today at the grocery store, okay? This is at Kroger, okay, so I'm not getting everything in bulk like like Jake did at Sam slash Costco slash whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? However, 20 of those 30 was cash back. So really, I only spent 110 because I was getting cash back, right? Then I also had to buy a giant thing of dish detergent. Welcome back, Jake. Of dish detergent Hi. that will last an entire year because it is 105 pods of dish detergent. That was 20 bucks. Then I got Tide Pods, which will last for at least two months. That is. Why'd you get dish detergent and Tide Pods? Because I ran out of both. Tide Pods Why are would you for, need both? Tide Pods, Tide pods are, just have dish detergent. No, Tide Pods are for clothes. I got the ones for clothes. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. No shot. Yeah. You use fucking <laughs> Tide Pods to clean I your... don't. I was confused <laughs> because he said dish detergent, which is a lot. Detergent to me is a laundry term. I just say dish soap. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me well, more. they're making fun of me. Well, they're making fun of me in the podcast. Jay, can you do this really quick in, in the in the fish light? <laughs> 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 I couldn't see myself. I assume it was funny. Um, actually, um, um, actually, but, but anyway, uh, so I so those both were giant bulk items that will last a long time. So we're down to seventy bucks, okay? And I bought <clears throat> sandwich stuff that will last for a fucking long time. I bought I bought a uh, peanut butter and jelly. I'm gonna make peanut butter and jelly. I bought a twelve pack of ramen, right? I bought uh, pizzas. Yeah, I bought 
uh, ingredients to make chicken fettuccine Alfredo later in the week, okay? I also got a few things for uh, breakfast. I got eggs, I got sausage, I got all that shit, man. Facts. So that was eggs, all eggs, bacon, was, grits, sausage. That was all seventy bucks. I'm a skinny uh, bitch. Uh, but once you get rid of everything else, once you get rid of everything else that was required, mandatory buys. That was seventy bucks. That shit's gonna last me at least two weeks. So I don't know what people are doing. Right? You all wow, are losing your more. minds. You need to start buying effectively. Don't buy coffee pods. Whatever you do. Don't yeah, coffee. don't buy fucking coffee pods. That's apparently. for the week. That's coffee is for the week. <laughs> Caffeine is for the week. Yeah, just unless do heroin buy, instead, like Unless do. you're a fucking champion and you buy a 24-pack of C4 pre-workout Skittles flavor like me. That's yeah, called smart investing. <laughs> don't be a coffee cell. Be a be a meth chad like me. Re real shit, actually, kind of a great purchase. I'm still going through them. I love the it. The C4 is so good. Yes, the meth? dude. I get like the, I get like the big packs of like the yerba mates from fucking Amazon. That shit comes in like two days. I'm set. Yeah, yeah but I, I've never cool. had I've never had yerba mate. Posted. Is it really that good? Yeah. You. What's the caffeine you, amount? You and Jeremiah from 150 previously wrapped corn balls, but not no longer because they stopped or whatever. Jeremiah, Jeremiah corn balls. Fucking loves. Yerba Jeremiah mate. Balls, let's call him. They're so yeah, good. Yeah, Jeremiah Balls. So, that's the only Jeremiah thing that balls. me and him agree on is that <laughs> Yerba Mates really? are a good and drink. And that Luke on Demand is perfect. It's the only thing Aww. that I can agree with Jer from Rap Corn Balls on. Thank you. Uh, that's so yeah. sweet. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I went to an event this weekend. I'm so excited to talk about this. It was actually. a swinger party. Um, it was. I got dicked. Let me tell you. My butt <laughs> is sore. Um, <laughs> me too. <laughs> no. That's a funny way of saying that. It is sore. <laughs> Play the laugh track. Um, I feel like, yeah, a, two, I feel like an da, early da, da, 2000s da, da. radio DJ. <laughs> You're yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Sample. Editing Jackson. Did you just edit Luke to say the N-word? What the fuck? Oh That's my crazy. Fuck. <laughs> we have to stop that bit. <laughs> We're gonna get we're gonna get in trouble one day. One of these days, people, one camera? of these days, we'll gain a new audience, and people will not. Now that we do shorts, we're gonna gain a new audience, and people aren't gonna understand that we're joking. And it's either gonna we're gonna get in trouble, or two, people are gonna be like, "Oh yes, finally the new." Thank God, the someone new who's saying it. <laughs> saying what? You guys want to see what's holding on my camera right now? And then we'll get to Jackson's thing. Yeah, I feel like we should talk about this. Switch it out, you know. Oh, let's go. Whoa! It's a garden gnome. Sick as fuck. He's like gonna chill with it. He's gonna he's gonna end up in my set. I'm building a set like behind me right now, and he's gonna end up in there. It fits with the color scheme. I know that's that's why I did it. It's the same spray paint. Graphic design nerd. You know the vibes. All right, Jackson, tell us about the you stupid fucking concert. What did you do? What did you do? <coughs> what, where did you go? What did Guys, you I went to the Injury Reserve by Storm music video release event that was happening in LA this weekend. For those who don't know, Injury Reserve in the near future is going to be releasing a double video. The first half of the video is a music video for their final song off of their most recent record. Uh, the song's called By Storm. And the second half of the video is a music video for their newest song off of this kind of new project they're starting that's titled By Storm, but the song is called something different. I it's can't all the exact one title of it. Double trio. It's all one video. Um, oh, okay. Kind of, kind of their whole thing was that uh, they want to kind of blur the lines between Injury Reserve and By Storm. They, they made it very clear this isn't a reset. They will still be performing old Injury Reserve stuff when they want to at their concerts and stuff, um, but the, they just they just didn't feel comfortable continuing Injury Reserve without Grogs, obviously. Right, the like that, that name. Passed away. That makes sense. So, yeah, so I, I get to the event, and the first thing I notice is that it's at the same place that I went to go see Phil Elverum talk about uh, his music video when he did that a while ago, or his the documentary that was made about him. So I was like, oh, this place is actually sick. Like, the people who work there are great. It's an awesome event. It's called, like, 2220, like, Arts and something. Uh, great, great venue though, <clears throat> but I'm waiting in line and, uh, I'm like close to the front and they let us inside like the, the waiting room kind of. And so I, I bought a shirt in there and I bumped into one of my fans, uh, one of, uh, the, the dude that I met at the black midi concert. I see this guy at almost every concert that I go to. He was at the God's BG one. He was at, uh, the black midi Is one. He a he fan of yours? I see this... Definitely. Like yeah. The podcast. <laughs> 
Yeah, you no. Watch I, I see this guy all the time. Like, super, wait, super nice guy. Where is Jackson um, going? I could follow him and be friends. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's not like that a lot. Uh, his name is Spencer. He's he's he actually is awesome. But we we wait, were in the lobby the talking things? about about music and stuff. Um, it's Cold getting more and more crowded in the room. It's starting to fill up. And if if like he's the laptop and I'm me and we're talking like this, someone passes by me like this and I see the back of their head and I immediately go, oh, that was Slauson Malone. Like I knew him. I knew immediately. He was just walking around, like dude was just that's around, so, and eventually so cool, he man. turned around and he was walking past, and I was like, yeah, that, that there he is, dude. That's so it's uh, so, so he weird when you go. I don't want to cut you off, but it's so weird no, when that's ahead. the case. So I said this whenever I saw Shame, but literally the entirety of Shame was outside next to the line, not talking to anyone. They were just out there smoking cigarettes before their show. And, like, I could have been, yeah. like, like I literally could have been, like, hey, can I get a hit? I wouldn't have because I don't smoke cigarettes. But I literally could have been, like, can I have a hit? Pussy, and they, yeah, they would have and they would have been, like, yeah. Like, it was so chill. And then, for Black Midi, this was weird because I, I don't know why this felt weird to me. Because I feel like it's the exact opposite for Black Midi or, like, how they normally interact with their fans. But Cam, during the opener, was just, like, walking around behind everyone, behind the crowd. And I just saw him. I could have stopped him and been like, hey, good luck on the show. But I just didn't. But that was so... Yeah. That was weird. <clears throat> but but Slauson Malone was around, and I, he eventually went into the main room uh, and, and left. And then, all of a sudden, I turn around, and Richie with the T's there. And he's like, everyone, everyone come inside. I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, so we all shuffle into this big this big room. He personally the said to the go, the go inside? Yeah, he was there. I get in there. It's like Sla Slauson's in the VIP section with a couple of other people that I don't recognize. Um, and then uh, him and Parker just kind of walking around the room. And I, me and uh, Spencer sit behind these two guys that I recognized from earlier because they were coming in and out of the venue. Um, so me and Spencer are sitting there talking. And Richard, I see Richard with a T come up the aisle and start like we're in like folding chairs like just rows of folding chairs right, right he just like walks down he is as close to me as this mic is to me like his leg was touching my leg he's talking to the guys in front of us with the photos and it's just richie with a t and he's just there and i'm like this is so weird like there he is <laughs> jake's um, doing what jackson wanted to do to richie yeah oh, and I, oh and I forgot to mention we're walking in and they're playing something from a crow looked at me on the speakers and i was like this <laughs> is fuck? so that's such a weird bizarre uh, there was a lot of weird vibe, microphone bro. stuff that happened during the show that i I'll mention in a minute, but yeah, they're, they're playing that, and we're we're sitting around waiting, and then finally everyone shuffles in, and him and Parker go on stage, and the moderator for the Q and A comes up, and they start talking for a little about the about the video, uh, and eventually Richie's just like, "All right, we're talking too much about the video without having him see it, so let's just show it, and we'll talk afterwards." So they get off stage, and the video plays, and dude, it was so it was so this is this was crazy. I don't want to spoil too much of the video, but uh, do you guys mind if I talk about it at all? Or you, you can talk about it. it. Like, yeah, I mean, you can talk about it. <clears throat> so spoilers the, if you don't want to hear about it go spoilers to, i don't know just skip like a uh, 10 minutes ahead i don't know the first half is the song by storm and it's all arch archival footage of them with grogs so it's like very emotional like them hanging out with them performing um and then half like right when the song's about to end it starts the camera pulls out and all the archival footage is on like being projected onto a screen uh -huh. and richie's on the floor watching it uh laying down and i'm looking around and i'm going he's laying down in the room that we're all in right now. Like they shot it in the venue that we're at watching this right now. I was like, wait, what the fuck? And the rest of the video for the, the new song is in the space that we're in. Like they had shot it there. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so fucking insane. The song is so good. It's so good, dude. It's like, it's very bad. It's, it's very bad to make the Phoenix, but it's got more of like a, a dance spin, which is like a weird to say, but is it, it has like, like a outside? dance section. Is it like really outside? Cool. Kind of. It's a little bit Please like tell me it's like it's outside. Kind of, oh, Please. hell yeah. yeah. That's, that's going <laughs> right to like that's gonna be right up my alley, dude. It's really fucking good, and the video is really fucking good. I want to hear it so bad again. They said it. They didn't say a date, but they said it would be coming out soon. Um, so they, they, they play the video, and they come back on stage, and they talk for a long time. The moderator for this Q&A was horrible. I'm just going to say that right now. She would, they would be talking and getting into a groove of it. And then she'd just put out some random anecdote about herself where she'd be like, yeah, well, that's just kind of what it's like at graduate poet school. And I'm like, and I I'm not even kidding you. She would, she would like go on the like tangents about like, oh, I know one time, like I was hearing about this old tale, this old Negro spiritual and would go off on this whole side tangent. And then like, and then she would get finished and there would be like 10 seconds of silence where Richard, sorry, Richie and Parker are just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. Where they just were like, and then the, okay. 
And then, and then uh, the audience questions. The audience questions were hit or miss. I didn't get to ask my question because the guy with the mic was kind of like not coming to the middle of the area. Right. Um, but someone asked them. They were like, "Yeah, like I, I've noticed you guys have a lot of spiritual, it seems, connections to Phil Elverum. Do you guys mind talking about that?" And they started talking about the microphones. They're like, "Yeah, like I was not big into his music before uh, Grog's passed, but uh, afterwards I really started getting into his whole discography." And they just talked about Phil Elverum. I was like, "This is so weird." Uh, listen um, to a crow looked at me after someone. I bet died. you were crazy. like crazy. Yeah, I know. It is crazy. <clears throat> yeah, um, they had so much good shit to say. Oh, I, I was gonna do this. So someone asked them what their favorite Grog's moment, like Grog's verses. What do you think they said? It was it was unanimous and immediate. They like they knew. Um, it was like on record, like on wax. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, on record. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a at a track. Three man so weave. Hold on. No. Hold on. Damn it. Uh, that's all I got. I'm. <laughs> bro, I had brought one guess. Uh, I'm gonna say. Footwork in a forest fire. It was footwork in a forest fire immediately. Dude, Everyone's like, oh, footwork. That that verse is fucking crazy. That, Stop dropping rolls. Dude, that dude, song is nuts. It's that so song good. Crazy. Richie was like, I heard that shit, and within 40 minutes, I had recorded mine. I was, he was like, I have, ne I had never. It was like listening to a new person like mm -hmm. record a track. It was wild. Um, yeah, but then this is the this is my favorite part of the whole night was um, the guy I was with Spencer brought his copy of Buy Something to Phoenix and he went to go get it signed because they, they just kind of ended the event and we were free to walk around and talk to people. So right. he went up to get him to, to sign it. Why'd you bring me? <laughs> you are not in the area. I'll anyways, fly. anyways. Yeah, YouTube money now. I'm not in you could have flown. Now. I wouldn't have stopped you. I had an extra ticket. I could have taken you. Um, but anyways, uh, he, we, we, uh, he went to go ask Richie, and I was kind of at the sidelines. And he he came, he came, Spencer came back, and we were waiting for Parker. And Parker comes down, and he's signing. Parker's signing his record, and he looks at me, and I'm wearing my Funny Game shirt. And Parker's like, "Oh my God, uh, uh, Michael Haneke movie, right?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, have you seen it?" And he's like, "Oh yeah." And we have like this like five to ten minute conversation about movies, and we, we he, I asked him about his video and his process for recording it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, this is how we did this shot and this shot," and he was talk, like giving me recommendations for like Haneke movies. And like things to watch, that and we just so had this. Awesome. I was just, it was the coolest thing. It was like no pressure. He was, was like super down to earth. He was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm getting on a side tangent." I'm like, "I'm here to see you, dude. Like, I paid money to see you talk. I paid this is money what to I be wanted. here, yeah, and hear That's you talk." Funny. It was yeah. so cool. I didn't, yeah. So and then after that, I left. I didn't get. To, I didn't talk to Richie or anything. I didn't talk to. Um, Did your friend get awesome, uh, Richie to sign the by the time I get the Phoenix vinyl? Yeah, he got both signatures. God, fucking damn! I'm so fucking. Jealous, bro. That is probably going to be worth a lot of money in a few years. God, uh, this is such yeah, an angry sure. episode for me. Everything's just making me so mad. God, but anyways, an angry day. Like, bi uh, big takeaway from the night was that um, they're going to be Parker performing Boy's injury reserve friend. shows, at, uh, songs at, at the new concerts. Okay. Um, this is not indicative of a new album on the way. This is just a transition period. So they're they're, they're going to be working on putting out stuff, but this is not like this song isn't the start of like a rollout. They don't have anything right. in the chamber, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else? I don't know. It was fun. R Richie kept on getting, he called it getting in his hater bag where he'd just like go off on tangents about like things he didn't like about the music industry. So he was talking hater about bag. how much he fucking hated like the holograms and Parker talked about how like how nervous he was for the knees music video because he felt like he needed to get the silhouette so right. Like he was switching between like the opacities of how to get like Grog's image in it perfectly without fucking it up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They, had, they put a lot of care into it, and it seemed very genuine. And it was very cool to be in the space where they recorded the video. Seems and, cool. Um, does getting, Parker like, an have a beard shirt. at the moment right now? This is a he weird does. question. It's not, it's, Dude, not like big, it's not as big. It's not as it's not as big as it used to be, but he still just, has the beard. Dude, on social, it's, it's huge. It's, it's weird. Um, it's weird envisioning him with a beard. I'm so used to that cover art where he ha doesn't have a beard. You know what I mean? He it looks no a lot more normal either. now. It looks a lot more normal now with like he has it trimmed down. Like not like this. It's probably longer than mine is, but he has it like a he has like a like a good beard. Mm -hmm. hmm. What a cool life. What what just a, like know, a right? cool life to live? Like just make shit that people pay money to go see your shit. And then they can see the shit you made and the shit that they're seeing as they're watching the shit. What a cool life. That was one of the biggest things I took away from that was that the like by the time I get the Phoenix would never have happened if they had not gone on tour with Slossom Alone. Like that was their one thing was like this would like we went on tour with them and that this is where this came to be. Like that tour was where that idea was born. Um, I'm trying to think what else hmm. was cool. It's probably why he was there because they felt like they should invite him or something. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Good, yeah. good video though, man. I'm yeah. so excited for it to come. I, I, we only saw it once, and so I even I forget now what it even like. I I know Did the vibe of it, but I can't Did remember what it sounded like. Did you record it so that we can listen to it? The event was recorded. I didn't know that. Someone was there actually from the injury reserve, like self-titled live thing. They had the shirt on and they asked a question. Oh shit! That's which cool. was like crazy. That was... Um, this um, is this yeah. is super. <clears throat> this is maybe a. Well, it's not random. You brought it up. Um. That probably was so fucking trippy whenever you, like, did the whole room go, like, oh, when they all realized the music video, or, like, uh, the second half was, like, in the place the they thing were The thing we're in. Not really, because they, they had kind of hinted towards it when they were in- introing it. They were, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, we were reaching out to you guys to use the space to film. And I was like, oh. And I, but I couldn't tell if they were talking about, like, filming this event or if it was part of the video. Right. Um. But, but Yeah. It was, just, it was just a great night, and everyone there was... All the fans were very nice and respectful. Some of the questions... Richie was getting kind of annoyed at the end, like, because they were like, all right, last question, and someone would ask a question, and they'd answer it. would be like, all right, that was not the vibe to end the night on. And he did that, like, three times. Because people just kind of... People would come being like, what was the moment that you knew that you would cross from self-titled into By the to Phoenix? And it was like, how many times can they answer the same question? Would you consider until, this like, your uh, Kid A moment? But I was so pissed, I didn't get... I, I wanted to ask about the cover art, and... They wouldn't. No one wanted to fucking call oh, on me, sick. but no one asked. Of uh, fucking, and like, well, I was pissed yo, off. Yo, did y'all pay a bag for that Nat Geo screenshot? Be real. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. I was like, I was like, yo, how the fuck did you find that? And like, why did you decide to make that like represent like a, such a monumental record for you guys? We like, got the ask only that. record we that doesn't have any of them reserve. on it. Yeah. We got to meet injury reserve again and ta- and at, well, by storm. We got to meet by storm and ask them just. Please tell us about this cover art, please. It's so yeah, hard. Uh, yeah. it's so someone, someone get that info to me. Someone ask them to get someone that get info that to me. Boring. We'll be in talks. Well, you're we'll new talks. best friends with Parker Corey. Just, just reach out and be like, hey, buddy, uh, I got a question for you. He's like, yeah, sure, boss. What's up? Oh, and yeah. Best friend Jackson. Burns, what's what's up? Yo, it's me, the Michael Haneke guy from the event. I love your new video on Core Core, dude. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I, I did. I, I would say I will say I did get kind of nervous when I realized Lawson Malone was there because I'd never been in like Besides the Phil, I guess, I'd never been in the vicinity of someone I'd made a video about, and so I was kind of like, oh. Has he seen it? How would you Alex? react if Slossom Malone was like, came up to you and he was like, hey, you're Jackson Burns, right? You made that video about my albums, and you were like, oh, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you got it all wrong. I was literally That's what say, I was nervous for, dude, because he he, he seems he like, goes the, up to not, you. like nothing like, against yeah, him, but he seems like the type the to be point, like, uh, you, I wish you hadn't done that. And I would have been like, oh, man, fuck. Now I feel like a dick. Whoops. Video out, bro. Video out. What are you going to do? Video out. That shit's up. What are you going to do about it? Shit's out of up, my bro. hands now. Um, but yeah. I'm out, bro. Album out. I'm out. What well, are you going to do about it? Jake, what's been pissing you off lately other than everything that's happened? God, so, so much, dude. So much. Tell us about it. I don't know. I don't want to turn this into a, I don't want to get my hater bag. Dude, Jake. I, mean, I don't Jake care what everything. I don't care what anyone says. If it is healthy and it is therapeutic hating, go for it, man. Go for it. That was one well, thing I'm, that sorry, not to cut you off. Later. That was that was that was one thing that Parker talked about was like he's like there's nothing more beautiful than like the edge of of haterism where it's like you want to hate something so bad but there's one thing holding you back and you have to like try to real like you have to respect deal with yourself it. liking this thing I th- that's, I th- that's like trout mass that's trout mass replica right there <laughs> yeah I, like that where it's I like think, oh like just... this is so fucking bad but like part of me is like enjoy like pianist music i guess like pianist music. right 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 um my thing my thing is with, with like hater culture or whatever I think hating is at its best when it's when it's like either justified or it's like nuanced. You know what I mean? So like, um, I also I also am a big. Fa- I don't care what anyone says. I'm a big fan of gossip, but not in a way, not in the way where you're like shitting on someone, but more in a way as like you're just like observing a situation happening and you're just talking about it. I love that shit. I think it's the most fun thing in the world to be like, ooh, I wonder what what's going on here. You I know? wonder what they think of this situation. Yeah, it's that's fun. Okay, I actually kind of want to talk about this and I was kind of skeptical too, but I, I might as well bring it up now. Have you guys been like following like the direction of the Nick is not green channel at all? Uh, it's, uh, all I know is that his videos, like, he makes, like, a, you laugh, you smoke fucking weed, and, like, shit like It's not that. even that, it's not even that, he used you to do that a lot, which actually was, was which was, like, kind of funny, but, like, 
DJ. He's Sato. been recently doing exclusively like TikTok drama content, and that's like his thing. He's like, yeah, I'm the new like drama creator for like TikTok and stuff. Awesome. Which like a lot of we people need do. More of those. But yeah, I know. I was gonna say, but it's the kind of thing where I'm looking at it and I'm like going like. You have so little to do with any of the things that you're talking about. Like, it, you're just not... It almost feels like the old man pointing at the younger kids being like, Oh, what, what are they up to? Those fucking crazy... Like, he old made a video about the Colleen Ballinger thing. Dude. And it was the most... It was just like... It was basically just like, Oh, man, this, Cal- this Colleen Ballinger thing was crazy, right? And everyone's like, Yep, that shit was crazy. And then he's like, Man, yep. fuck her, I guess. She's Get a groomer. And hammer, everyone's like, bro. Yeah. Well, he has like... That's his second... Uh, well, is that is it really yeah, his but, second channel? He has more videos on it, and just as many. Yeah, it's it's the lines blurred. The lines blurred. It's like he just has two channels. I don't think one of them's the second one, but it's it's like his thing. Now. And it, but it just weirds me out. And I feel like I don't know. Co- I think I'm, I just, in a weird place. I right now. I just am so. I think my thing with like drama content on YouTube now is like people. I don't know. Like, for example, like, I saw a commentary channel who I don't like. I will preface, I don't do not like this person, so I may be biased. But it's a commentary channel who's, like, kind of like edgelord, kind of, or whatever. And they constantly are trying to farm drama about this random-ass Twitter slash YouTuber who's really small. It's named something Tipster. And I just see this guy, like, in my feed because for whatever reason, like, people who I follow follow him or whatever. And so I just get it on my feed. And he'll be (coughs) dunking on this random dude. And I'm just, like, in my head, I'm like, who the fuck is this? Why is this important? Like, who cares? Like, I don't know. Like, what what is up with, like, drama channels? I'm like, who truly cares about this stuff? Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, just, I can't, like, imagine myself ever being interested in, like, oh my gosh, random YouTuber with 10k subs said that, I don't know, OnlyFans is good or something. I don't know. You ever it's see so the, that? The, yeah. There's this one tweet. There's one tweet. It was, like, uh, it's like Selena Gomez News or whatever. It was, like, a Twitter account, and it, it was a two-tweet thing. The first one was, like, f- like, five hours ago. It was, like... Hey guys, I'm taking the day off. I'm only gonna post if anything big happens, right? And then five minutes later, Selena Gomez goes outside and buys croissant. <laughs> like that's literally <laughs> that's literally what this is. Selena has left her house and purchased a croissant. That's so funny. Does this have to well, do like, anything that, with Justin thing, Bieber? Like, like, Get like, our best like, men okay. on this. Nick, like like he made a video. I, I I don't want to hate on this guy because I I do enjoy his content. I think is I think is very funny. But it's just for some reason recently it, all his stuff is diluted into like this uh, baker on TikTok was scamming their uh, their constituents and like upcharging for cakes. And I was like, this is what content has turned into now, where we're just showing off it's just like, like businesses being scummy. Like it, it just felt like you have nothing to do with this. You live nowhere near the area. You're not really involved in this drama like you're not a fan of the person who's making the videos it, it feel it's so detached you refer to that kind and of he even said in the newest swap. video because someone someone um fuck uh it, it was another commentary channel made this video about how c- kind of commentary channels are getting redundant um and he was an example in one of the videos uh wait, and he made wait, a response this, where this is actually a really good video you should you should send that to me because it sounds interesting it sounds like something i'd be interested in watching you know it's it's noah samson if you know who noah samson is he's oh. actually he's, he makes really great videos um but Bad he made this video about how work. commentary channels are getting redundant and i think nick was briefly mentioned in it or at least one of his thumbnails appeared in it and he made a response yeah. and he was kind of like i'm doing this for money and i was like money 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 <sighs> I like like yeah like I, I got I get it like, it's, your, loud, like it, it's a job but like you get it yeah like dude this is just doing like oh I'm crafting a thumbnail like to get more clicks because I'm really proud of this video and want people to see it and make money <laughs> off it versus being like I am cra- just like the direction of my channel is solely dictated by what makes the most money and fuck the quality you know no yeah because he even I, said he's he even said he's like i wake up i wake up i write a video i film it and it's done before the first half of the day is even over and i'm like that's fucking insane damn, bro, that's insane that's insane to do that's, that's ins- insane to do. that's insane and not that you're not like putting effort into it because like people can go to a job and like get something done and obviously they're putting like effort into it you know what i mean but like to just like I don't know like to even just it's quantity like, over quality. Well, well to well to even like approach it with such a nonchalant uh like um like way. You know what I, I I'm trying to like nonchalant uh not way but 
attitude and such a nonchalant attitude towards what you're making it just feels like a like a boring nine to five job which i feel like dude if i ever ever in my entire life get the chance to do youtube full-time i'm just eating chip crumbs off of my plate um if i ever get the time to fucking do that shit like full-time dude i'm gonna treat it like i treat my job at the radio station i want to be going ham at that at that fucking job because i like it it just sounds like i haven't seen this video or really watching much of nick is not great but this just kind of sounds like someone who's lost their passion or have had it slowly kind of distorted and like kind of like prostituted into like this uh, I used to make stuff and money came and now it's like, well, money comes when I make stuff. So now it's just kind of, how yeah. can I make the most money? You know, let's get this over quick and <clears throat> let's uh, call it a day. So I go play Fortnite or whatever video games he plays. And he, he plays Fortnite. He did make a great point of being like, listen, I could spend hours on a thumbnail that looks beautiful and is perfectly crafted and get less, like half the views that I do. If I just have my face and an image of the person I'm talking about and just say like, what is going on? Question mark. And it's like, okay, yeah. But the the content is the same mm. level, like is the same quality. Like you see what I'm saying? It's not just yeah, about the thumbnails, right, but the content right. that's in, in, being input in it. It's, it's like I don't paste, like I don't like, like I don't give a shit if your thumbnail is the exact same as other people's. But as long as the actual contents of the video is something unique, then that's what's interesting. You know what I mean? But I did. Yeah. I am reading a, comments on this Noah Sampson video, and I did mean to watch this actually because it did intrigue me. Um, but. Um, People in the comments are just saying, like, a lot of the times I watch these videos because even though I know they're the same, I kind of treat it as, like, a podcast that I watch while I eat food because I expect what I'm about to get um, and stuff like IQ that. The individual YouTube it's, it's very, it's very, um, which is fine. There, There is definitely places, time and place for... There's a market for that, yeah. Yeah, there's the market for stuff that you watch while you eat. I mean, that's... Whenever I watch fucking review bra, uh, review fast food things while I eat because I think I love his videos. But even that is like, he's still having to like craft a review and it's like unique every time because it's like a new item. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch the same guy. I don't want to watch the same four people review the same fast food thing. I only watch him because he does it the best and he does it in a unique way. You know what I'm saying? I I, I feel like that's what's so aggravating too is that I, I, I see... And we've talked about this a million times. This is going to be redundant. But, like, there are so many great commentary channels that are getting a lot of attention that, like, I love. Like, me, me and Luca talk about, like, Eddie Burback or Drew Gooden who have, have like, the Drew commentary Gooden, format goat. that you would expect from those copy-paste things. But they have – they're so personal and, like, they're, they're so unique to just them that it's impossible to compare to other creators. Versus I feel like there's another tier where it's, like – I could watch your video on this subject, and I could watch this guy's video on this subject, and they're all the same subject. I'm like, these are the same videos. You added no personality to them. Your commentary is just like, someone did something bad, therefore a thing is bad. Right. And, and like and everyone and agrees because like duh yeah. like that's what that's <laughs> this, what it is like is, there's no is, added nuance. To be fair though, like in 2016 when it was more like edgy YouTubers making commentary yeah. videos about stuff, like regardless of whether they have aged well over time it was the same thing where they were all making the same video about the same stuff you know what i mean it's just kind of adapted to now it's people who have generally good takes are making those videos you know what i mean instead of people having it's just different areas of content are going to do the same thing you're going to have like edgelords still make videos about idubs all the time for i don't know not saying the n-word anymore and they're like mad about it or something like that and then there's people who aren't edgelords talking about Colleen Ballinger and it's like oh, that, she sucks right and you're gonna have like 10 videos like that um I guess another thing that I've noticed is like this is not necessarily a, a diss because I understand people are gonna do things that they think will like get them like clicks and stuff like that but I don't understand uh when people and maybe this is because this is not how I approach content like it's not like a new album comes out and I'm like, I got to listen to it and make a video about it immediately. Like I make videos about whatever I want, like whenever I want. Right. And it's just like, if people click on it, uh, like for example, like the Colleen Ballinger stuff or whatever, where she pulled out the fucking ukulele and people made 10 videos about it. Right. Um, I, there's this trend with commentary channels where like, they clearly don't give a shit about the thing they're talking about, but like, will pretend to like, know that they that will pretend to act like they do and they'll be like well 
And and then I get the point I'm leaning to is there's a video that keeps showing up on recommend recommendations. And this guy probably makes good videos. I'm not saying he doesn't make good videos. I've actually seen a few videos he's made, and they're fairly funny. Uh, his name's Andy King. Do you know who I'm talking about, Jackson? Andy King. He was on TikTok. I'm going to look at the face. He was on TikTok for a while. He was the guy who was like, I, I made Michael Jordan cry or whatever. Like that TikTok. Oh, um, Mud... Mud, whatever. Yeah, he, yeah, he had a different yeah. name on TikTok that yeah. was like Mud Eater yeah, or something yeah. dumb like that. Um, but he makes commentary videos in the same style as like those other guys um, on YouTube. But he made a video which is doing really well where he reviewed Colleen Ballinger's Netflix show, right? Where he says like, it's bad, you know? No one would have fucking gave a shit about that show if it weren't for the fact that she got in trouble... And so it, I guess it's a more interesting idea than just being like, she's bad. And it's more like, oh, well, let's look back at this thing she made and dunk on this. But I kind of don't rock with that either. Because I feel like that's like kind of looking back at something in retrospect when like, I don't know. Like you can do that, but like, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's it's like, um, it's like if you made a video, Jackson, where you were like, the microphones is good, which you did. And then like 10 years later, you're like... Yeah, I'm not actually as crazy about the microphones, and I made a commentary video where I was like, let's watch this old Jackson video and see how weird it <laughs> Point is. Point out all of his you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it gives, like, a weird vibe. Maybe that was rambly. Apologies if it was, but, um, yeah. No, you're fine. I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just want to bring that up because I just... I've seen a lot of people... I've just seen... Good content creators that I like kind of lose their fucking path. And I'm not going to do their path because that sounds so snobby. But just like I, as a viewer, I, I feel like they have lost the spark of what made them interesting in the first place. And it's weird to me to see them kind of like growing as opposed to like losing the following for doing uh -huh. that. I um, I guess it's just a new audience though. No, yeah. I, 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 I've been watching a lot more um, like short form content lately on YouTube. Not like shorts or like TikToks or anything like that. But there's this channel that I really do love because he's filling the he's filling the um, Gus Johnson hole that my body had whenever he left. But his yeah. name is Man Carrying Thing, and he makes the fucking funniest. I think shorts. I know what you're talking about. He makes the funniest fucking videos, and they're all like just like a minute long most of the time. But they're so goddamn funny, and it's funny too because he'll like make those, and then like randomly he'll drop like a. 50 minute video where he's just like reviewing a really good book that he read and it's like still awesome he's a great channel i like oh yeah i i saw that video he made where it's like the, that thing that youtubers do when they want to sound smart and it's like the whole it's totally and i i think all at least me and jake have totally been like done that before the thing he's talking about Can where it's like it? You do the dramatic intro, and then it's like the the tape recorder stops, and you like re rewind it, and then you start again. <laughs> like the analog I use sound. the tape recorder sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I have. Let's go back to the beginning. So music. Yeah, creative. and then it's like the. Yeah. Tape. <laughs> but it's not even just that. It's also like the, it's also like the blue screen of like the the shitty TV, the camcorder TV. Hang and on, like, Jackson. Let's run you, it back real quick. Jackson, you know what? How do we you get know, here? Or like, or like. This is more of a music reviewer thing, but like in your Wolf video, when it, you had the clips of you starting the record and like all that stuff for each, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. that shit was like, like it was, it's good in the video, but because you, whenever you're watching your video, you don't think about that, but it's just funny whenever you point that shit out. Someone, someone in my discord the other day said that they wish that I made more content like my Doom video and I... It didn't even hurt my feelings, but I was more just like, uh, why? Like, <laughs> that shit was not good. Like, it was fine, you know? I don't know. You guys gotta, Content, we, we gotta do, we it's still gotta good start video. breaking it's just the mold. Like, we it's do just some like crazy old shit. Jackson Burns. It's not, it's not the new reformed Jackson Burns, you know what I mean? We, we gotta start breaking yeah. old. We can't be doing the same things all these other commentary YouTubers are doing. We gotta do crazy shit in our videos. Luke, like, you gotta bring back the to veteran do. review style. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you gotta bring back the everything. Jake, bring back the album cover tutorials, please. We love them. <laughs> All three people. People forget that too, where it's like, where it's like, we're just people. Like, we're it's like we're a studio busting out content. Like, uh, oh, well, like people know that. Orchard. It's like people people know I didn't have fun me. doing that. People know that about me. Uh, they know I, I I can't bust out content often. I didn't mean that, I but it's just like it. Just like the, so like the go back to what you used to make allegations. It's like I don't, it wasn't fun for me. So no. 
No, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that though. Jackson, all right, here's a here's a good question. This is a fun question. It's YouTube centric. What is a video that you guys have made where you can legitimately say you did not, for the most part, you did not have a good time making the video? Like you, like you made the video, you were like, I'm happy it's oh. out, but you were like, man, like that was not fun making that video. I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at my videos. I, I know my answer, it. but I've said it before. It's my everything, everything video, like my guide to everything, everything video, because I recorded it maybe... I, th I recorded it once, but I edited it maybe like nine times because this was before I had Premiere Pro. I had some cracked bullshit. Yeah. And every time I edited it and I'd save it and then I'd close the program, it would lose it. Like it wouldn't even save the, the file. And it took me like five times editing the video in full and then closing it and saving it to feel, to figure out, oh, it's, it's not saving. So I have to do the entire thing and export it in one shot. And it was horrific. That sucks, dude. In my um, latest video that's out right now, as of you guys watching this, uh, I say that I recorded the, <laughs> the video twice because I did, because my camera kept fucking up. I didn't realize what Shutter was. And yeah, now we're here. Real. real. I'll, I'll, I, have two, I have two answers. The first is um, the rehearsal video, because I had to get that shot of me in the park with that fucking paper plate mask yeah. on holding that sign that says we'll do content for pity and it was very crowded and i felt like such a fucking dweeb because i had to be in this basketball court just like holding the sign and i felt like a fucking idiot <laughs> but that was more just embarrassing like that wasn't like a difficult thing to do yeah D difficulty wise probably either the swans or the daughters one just because it was, it was literally it was literally so much music to listen to <laughs> where it was just like over it was like overwhelmingly a lot of music I, you suck. That, 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 that but I, yeah, probably the sw probably the swans with the Apex Twin one, just because it was like so much fucking music. Um, Jackson, if it makes you feel any better, uh, you this is this is for you all spoilers. But the video is already out at this point, so I can show this. But my friend, um, my friend uh, Sydney, I'll block their I'll block the the usernames and stuff. But I had to film this in a pool for my music video, and there were multiple people out and about. Um, in the pool and I had to get in with a full set of clothes and it was That's very funny. it was very embarrassing um, but yeah. it, Ooh, but, it, do it man. but it's no, okay the no. things you do the things you do for content I suppose my I... answer my answer is this is maybe a random you would expect me to say the Eminem video but with the response that that video got being so split and hilarious I don't care if I didn't have a good time making it because the aftermath just makes that video so much better in my opinion and like worth it. You know what I mean? The one video that I genuinely hated doing was my good kid in mad city versus to pimp a butterfly video, uh, which is the most random fucking video in the world. I don't think anyone had anyone that's actually a fan of the channel has ever been like, Oh, that's a, that's a Luke on a man classic right there. Like no one, <laughs> no one has ever thought that. Right. But I hated it because it was right before I had started like incorporating lots of sketches in my videos. And it was also before I had started the storyline really. And so it was just such like a filler video. I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. I have to <laughs> do that. I was like, I have to do this video so that people know I'm like a music channel. And I was like, I can fucking talk about Kendrick <laughs> Lamar, I guess. And I just, it pissed me off so bad. I made it in like a week. Remember whenever I used to make videos in a week, guys, remember that? But um, I remember when you used to make yeah. videos. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, but um, uh, good times. Hey, the joke but, uh, is the joke is technically over because a video was out. So even Let's if it's not like a, a video, video, but you know what I mean. Um, do you guys, do you guys have like a a video that you've always wanted to make but you can't just because of logistics or like you don't have access to the stuff you'd want to do to make it? Um, I got a bunch I, of videos I'd love to make, but I know no one's gonna watch it. This is not not really not, not necessarily logistics, but uh, this is probably not your the answer you're looking for. But it's a video that I truly will never make because or not never make. I'm not gonna say oh, never. Yeah. I'm not gonna say never, but it's a video that I am holding off to make until I know it will be absolutely like perfect. Like I would change nothing about it, and it's a video about One Four Eight, my favorite album of all time. And, and honestly, if I were to make a final YouTube video, that would probably be it. 
that would probably be the last. Do you do you think I do you think you'll ever have a be sorry? I'll let you answer this, Jake. Do, do you do you think you will ever have another favorite album besides that record? Dude, no. I just think it's it's literally so many like so many eras of my life have been like uh, impacted about that album, and like uh, it's just I have such like a good story of how I discovered it, and I also like just the um, emotional impact it had on me when I first discovered it and like a bunch of other times that I also listened to the album. I also think just the music is fucking incredible. So like, it doesn't matter. And it's like, I don't know. Like, it's almost like, it's almost like so biased to the point that if I did think an album was better, I literally couldn't with my heart say that I like it more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just that, yeah. like, it's just, it's just that like, <laughs> Uh, important to me, I suppose. Jake, has your favorite album changed since we started doing these podcasts? Uh, no. It's Damn, been, I'm uh, only one. Jesus! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I mean, it's up there, but I still think Get to Heaven's my favorite album. Yeah. Which they're repressing Man Alive on vinyl. Which I was, maybe, oh yeah, I was gonna talk. Maybe there's a chance Get to Heaven will be pressed on vinyl again. There, I'm praying. Oh well, if it's a t if they're doing a ten year anniversary thing for their it's debut, not. It's, oh, it's not. It's not. It's the thirteen year anniversary. Yeah, right. That's what remember? I said. I'm like, this you think album they'd came wait out at least two years for fifteen. I'm like, this album came out in 2010. Why are you repressing it? I mean, wait, I'm, I'm, not I'm looking. I'm looking this up right now. Hold on. Yeah, Man Alive came out in 2010, and I was confused. I'm like, their their marketing was like, oh, our album yeah, is finally yeah. a teenager. I'm like, that's a weird like time to repro. I mean, I'm not complaining, but like, yeah, it's that, weird. That'll probably mean that in 2026 that we're gonna get a, a fucking get to heaven. <laughs> oh, it's heaven. it's th this is so quirky of them. It's because whenever the album first came out, they described it as one 100 years of teenage boy. That's how yeah, they described so like, the album. And our so, album is finally and so a teenager. now that their album is a teenage boy, they, they did a repressing. Yeah. That's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. It's cute, but it's still bizarre if you're looking at it yeah. in like a, a n numeric sense. I mean, I guess. you love that album, don't you, Jay? I mean, you love all their albums. But Man like, Alive I'm, is... I haven't listened to it all the way, which is probably surprising, but there are some bangers off that album, some absolute slapperoonies. But a lot of it, I feel like, is kind of... They're still trying to find their way. I th obviously, they found their way on Get to Heaven. And Ark was kind of them finding more of their way. Then they found it. So, in my personal opinion, that's how I feel. Like, slap a Rooney's on it, but I've never listened to the whole thing. Yeah. Jake, do you have an, uh, a video that you want to make that you just can't because of logistics? Well, I don't know about logistics. I want to make a video, like about something but i i know no one's gonna watch it i have to get to the point where i'm one of those youtubers where it's like oh it doesn't matter what you make a video about as long as it's coming out of your mouth and i want to listen to it right yeah because i've always been fascinated with like losing love or like like falling out of love or like losing a passion or something like that and mm. like i i've i've lost a passion i think that's a very fascinating topic to talk about but it's so like stupid that like I don't think anyone's really gonna care. Unless, I like, think that'd be a great point. video. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it would come out of left field from like a music YouTuber, but I feel like it, it, it's you, a like, thing where doable. it's like Jake, have you ever? Doable, this but... is this is silly because you have three podcasts. Well, do you have three? <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, well, you uh, have one. You have one that actually two, happens. Two point three. Yeah. Let's yeah. say two point three. <laughs> um, but um, one point three. 1.5 how about that all right but but you have a podcast and you have a music channel and you have your main channel have you ever thought about just making a second channel just like the post random ass shit on too much i mean that's all yeah, that's what much. i have that is too i much. have i have luke's video archive which is literally just if i want to shit post on there or if i like want to post music stuff with the exception of a music video yeah, um, if I were to do a second channel, it'd have to be to the point where, like, YouTube is my full-time job and I could justify it. But, like, if I'm getting a part-time job, having a second part-time job and YouTube and then have to justify doing a second channel just for, like... I Because I want to make a passion project. Right, so right, I'm going to post right. something shitty. I'll do it on my main channel. I don't give a fuck. It's the future, <laughs> baby. I can do whatever I want. You've but already, if I were to do yeah. a, main, a second it's channel... It's funny because whenever you post something shitty on your main channel, it, it, it does, normally, great. It does, it does well. great. It does well. Yeah, it does normally. great. 
and make a Playboy Money <laughs> merch speed um, run and fucking XQC reacts to it. I actually do have an answer for this, Jackson. And this is not a joke. I have thought about making a video where I review Viper's discography. Um, but the issue... Damn, dude, that shit is not possible. Yeah, it's not possible. Because he has... <laughs> but, and, and the thing is, and the thing is, I'm not gonna make a fucking video... <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, I'm not gonna make a video where I'm just like, oh yeah, he has these uh, albums, but we can skip over them, right? You guys know me. I have, have to, to talk about it. Review. I have to talk about that it. That would be that would be like a 24 hour long video. That might minimum. be that might be my Luke on the Man passion project where I just work on it for years, you know. And and it, once it's done, it comes out. Oh, yeah, it's, it's my it's my mad god. <laughs> mad god. Mad god. Mad god. Mad god. Wait, I gotta do it with the fish. I give Mad you a god. Mad god. <laughs> That's how I envision it too. It's like Mad God to Mad Return god. to Mad God. <laughs> mad <laughs> God to Return to Mad God. <laughs> Reference to the Patreon right there. Patreon people. Patreon. Patreon. That's so real. Subscribe. You'll get more yeah. very detailed and thought provoking questions like Are you gonna kill yourself? That's the question, game. <laughs> what keeps you I, up? I will night? say I will I will say I know I've mentioned this in the podcast for, but I would I I have this fin- I have a really good idea for and we're back. <laughs> Jackson, because I still, fucked up. Yeah, I Jackson's forgot that I was going to keep a secret. The hardest hard cut of all time. Oh my god, <laughs> it was jarring how hard that was. Oh my god. <laughs> you you should you should have man. it you should have it where you're like I was going to make a video and we're back like it just cuts like yeah that. literally yeah just the hardest <laughs> no, I'm hard going, cut of I'm all going time. to oh, yeah man. yeah. I've got so one. I've got one. For, I've got one for for Mount Erie, and I've got one for microphones in 2020. Uh, I've got, that's all what I'll say. Well, I'd love to do a video where a, I interview the caretaker. I'd love to do it, but I cool. think it's lo- logistically impossible. Just as like a a full circle kind of thing, but I'm not traveling to fucking fucking Saskatchewan, Alaska, wherever the fuck he lives. I will say there's a lot of things that I have wanted to do for other videos that I haven't been able to because logistic stuff, where it's just like I just don't have the the time or the budget or like the amount of quality of like the, like right. I was gonna I was gonna I just said right what I just said right oh, I thought you said wait yeah I thought you said wait too. I like, like I was gonna stop, I go. was gonna uh that that piano song is in all the core core videos I was gonna learn that and play it on the piano as like a That's part cute. of it but it's like so complicated and I would never have time to do it uh, <sighs> yeah well, guys, Jake, did you get the- Watch my new video, guys. Wait, Watch wait, the Jake, new video on DJ Roswell. The, oh, what's did, up? Did you get the $5 from our patri- patron through Cash App? Did you get those $5? Because if you did, we must wish them a happy birthday, LED. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, wait, what? I, wait, wait. Oh. I'm in the dark on this. What's going on? Nothing happened. It's just LED's birthday, and they made a joke in the in the Patreon server where they were like, I paid Jake $5 over Cash App. Now you have to say happy birthday in unison at the same time on the podcast. Happy I'd, birthday. I, I'm I'd not rather saying die. in unison. Fuck you. I'd rather die than kneel to big capitalism, buddy. <laughs> yeah, let him know. Let him know. Jake me. Leftist orc. Oh my god! Holy shit! I, I've we been. Knew what happened? I've been. Too. I almost said communist. I've been l- right. I've been left. But I'm right in the center, baby. That's how you know I'm fucking angry. They call him. They call him Jake the fence sitter. So they call fence sitter. <laughs> Sounds vaguely sexual, right? They fence call me. It does. Kind of hot. They call me Luke the Luke the gay guy, and that my friends, no one calls you. No one calls you that. That's the end of the episode. Fuck you. I'm leaving. That's it. Goodbye. Did I got he that just come out and leave? Oh, shit. Was that what that was? Damn. Oh, he never did in I front like of you, watching... did he? Oh, What's shit. That? Yeah. He never did in front of you. He's been doing that for me like every episode. Fuck. Yeah. I feel like we just watched a gender reveal party, but like... Reverse. Backwards. Reversed. <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs>